Uh -huh. uh, today I'm talking to Mahmoud and I'll give you a chance to introduce who you are and the role you're in and the type of projects you work on. Hey, thanks. Uh, my name is Mahmoud. I am a test technologist at Ballard Power Systems in the Systems Test Engineering Department, and I'm currently on the HD Plus 100 kilowatt program. How did you find your way to this position, kind of educational background, and what led you to join the team? Uh, well, I joined, I found actually just a job posting on Indeed, um, and I applied through there, and then... Uh, I started doing research into what Ballard was, and I got really interested in the work that they do with hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, I just thought it was super interesting. It's all pretty new technology. And working in the test department, I thought, uh, would be a great way to really become familiar with the, with the products. And schooling-wise, then, what did it look like for you trying to get a position like this? What did you have to do school-wise? Uh, yeah, so I went to I went to BCIT, which was um, pretty nice because they kind of give it to you on a silver platter almost. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of engineering firms will will look out for BCIT applicants, which is great. Um, but uh, yeah, I studied mechanical engineering um, and I majored in design. I got my diploma in design, um, and just kind of. Uh, a, a big, big part of of my schooling was my capstone project in second year, um, doing this big product project where I designed um, an entire assembly line, an entire automated assembly line, no workers required, um, to be as efficient as possible. And uh, I think that was that was a really big part of uh, the job search was was showing employers that project. Yeah, I've actually interviewed a couple of people already that have gone to BCIT and civil engineering, electrical engineering, all across the board. And I'm wondering if you give more insight into how you, in from your perspective, BCIT training can differ from, let's say, other universities, because they've told me it's a lot more hands-on. You get a lot more, it's a lot more streamlined to yeah. actual being able to work. So just your thoughts on that. Yeah, uh, I 100% agree with, with what you just said. I think a lot of other universities, it's more theory-based. Um, they teach you, you know, the theories and the principles of engineering, which is, you know, obviously very important. And that is something that is covered at BCIT. But a big part of BCIT's learning is, um, you know, what you're going to be doing in the field once you graduate, what you're going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you know. Um, you know, obviously, depending on where you are, the majority of people on a day-to-day -day aren't, aren't going to be sitting at a desk, you know, doing, you know, Bernoulli's or, or whatever it is, right? You're going to be doing hands-on work. And I think PCIT does a really good job at, at giving you a taste of what that's like. Yeah, and that's most, like, institutes of technology. Like, when I was in Edmonton, they had the, I don't remember, they had, like, an Alberta Institute of Technology, and that's kind of what those programs are for, from my yeah. understanding. Kind of transitioning to your work experience then, what would you say an average day works like for you? An average day looks like for you? <clears throat> yeah. Um, so my, my position is really nice. It gives me the option to work remotely from time to time. So if I'm working remotely, my day pretty much is sitting here um, and just doing, you know, writing reports, writing procedures, looking over data um, and things like that. But if I'm in the office, uh, I'll usually be in our... Uh, lab here in, in Burnaby and uh, I'll be doing hands-on work so I'll be actually running the tests or setting up te for tests um, you know whether that's installing a new fuel cell or you know modifying it to do a specific thing to see how the fuel cell is going to react to that um, stuff like that. What would you say then is the time you split between desk work more typing and drafting compared to actually working with your hands what's the time split for you between those two? um it's it's kind of always changing uh when i first started i was 100 percent hands-on just really getting familiar with everything uh, and then once i kind of got some experience and i really understood the fuel cell then i was able to step back and and start splitting my time up um as of right now i would say it's a it's about a 60 40 split um 60 percent hands-on 40 percent you know desk work but there are times where those swap if if you know we're just running automated tests and i don't really need to be in the lab as often i'll just be doing data analysis and, and keeping an eye on those tests 
Um, and then there's other times where I'm just hands on all week because we've got new fuel cells that need to be hooked up. Okay, so a decent amount of variability then. That's good to hear. What would you say is the best thing about your work? Um, for me, I would say, uh, well, the work environment is is great. Uh, the work environment at Ballard is really good. Everybody's very nice. Everybody's very um, understanding, always willing to help. But um, also just the fact that, you know, it's all new technology. So we're kind of all learning as we go. Um, you know, obviously some people have been at this company for 20 or 30 years. And so they have a very deep understanding. But at the same time, you know, we're constantly making new products and we're constantly learning. Yeah, innovation is one of those things where you're always making something new. So always, everyone's learning new things as you go along with it because it's yeah. just new technology. That's the exactly. nature of it. What is one of the more challenging things about your job then? Uh, I think a really hard part is just scheduling. Um, you know, thinking things are going to not take as long as they do and then they take significantly longer and it kind of throws everything off. You know, all your tests get pushed back and then the whole schedule is delayed. Um, it happens, you know, more often than we'd like, but there's some things that are just out of our control that, that happen. Yeah, that's one thing that as a student, like a high school student, you don't really think about when you think of your jobs, you think more this high level design and stuff like that. But at least in my experience, a lot of times actually spent just coordinating meetings and trying to find times that work for everyone. And then yeah. sometimes like something comes up and they can't make a meeting, it has to be rescheduled. And that's kind of I, unanimous across different industries I've found. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. What type of person would you say would succeed as like a, in a position like yours? What type of person do you think should pursue that type of position? I think that if you enjoy working with others, if you enjoy working in a team, um, then this sort of position would definitely be suitable for you. You know, there's there's never really a moment where I'm working by myself. Even if I'm working from home, I'll be, you know, on call with others. I'll be constantly communicating with others. Uh, so we're always working as a team. And if you, you know, if you enjoy problem solving, you know, puzzles, things like that, then I think this this position would be really great for you as well because, you know, something will happen and you got to figure out why that happened and how you can stop it from happening again. Is there anything you would recommend to high school students as a way to kind of get a taste of what your job is like or kind of test out what that career would be like? For example, I've talked to a lot of computer engineers and they say, oh, just work on a coding project and that'll kind of give you insight into whether or not you'd like this career. Is there any mm -hmm. equivalent of that for, let's say, mechanical engineering or test engineering? Yeah, uh, I would say, um, you know, take on some sort of project where you have to make something work. Uh, you know, if you want to get a project car, you know, something like that, or if you want to, you know, build your own electric bike or electric scooter, things like that, I think that would give you a really good insight of what it's like. Cool. One last question then before we wrap up. What is something that surprised you after starting work that you weren't, maybe you weren't expecting or it was just cooler or a lot more difficult than you were anticipating while you were studying to become an engineer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think the big one for me is that um, in, in my experience in the engineering world, everybody is very casual and you know when I thought about it when I was in school I was thinking of this like professional you know suits only and you have to know what you're doing and, and things like that but you know once I actually got in the workplace I, I kind of learned like everybody's everybody's figuring it out right so nobody expects you to know everything especially when you're fresh out of school nobody expects you to know what you're doing uh, they expect it to be a learning curve and they expect it to take time and that that was something that I thought was really cool but um while I was in school was not expecting. Yeah, it's really important, I think, to not put anyone, everyone's human, to remember everyone's human and that everyone makes mistakes and that it's okay. And everyone else knows that as well because you find that out through the course of your career. It's natural to make mistakes. We all have and we've yeah. seen others as well. Exactly. So it's a really good thing to be aware of. Mm -hmm. One final question for you. 
before we wrap up, I know it's the second one, but I think you've given really good insights here, is what is some general advice that you would give to a student who's considering pursuing this career, maybe to prepare for it, mm -hmm. stuff along those lines? Yeah, um, you know, I think if you're thinking about going into engineering, um, I would say um, brace yourself. It's going to be intense. It's going to be difficult. There's going to be times that you question it. Um, but, you know, if it is something that you really do think you're passionate about, pursue it. Uh, because once you, you know, finally graduate and you get in the into the workforce, you find how, how you find out how rewarding it really is. Um, you know, whether it's you design something or you build something. Once that's finished, you take a step back and you look at it and you go, I did that. I was a part of this. Uh, it's it's a feeling that that words really can't describe. Um, so, you know, if it's something that you are interested in, um, you know, I would say take that leap and, and give it a shot because especially in engineering, it's so lucky that if, if you get, you know, a degree in engineering, even if it's, if it's, I studied mechanical, but even if it's not mechanical, if it's, you know, electrical, um, your options are, are so wide. You, you can really get any job with an engineering degree or diploma. Just kind of following up on one thing you said right there, you mentioned, and this is mentioned by virtually every engineer I've talked to, is that it's a grind, it's a very arduous journey. In your experience, which is likely similar to most other people, what part of it made it arduous? Is it the homework? Is it a lot of homework? Is it very complex homework? Is it a combination of both? Is it, what was it that made it very difficult? Uh, I, yeah, I think it's a combination of both. Um, you know, obviously, it's not a surprise engineering students, we take a lot of courses. Um, you know, you'll find most engineering students, they're taking, you know, six or seven courses. Like at BCIT, you're taking seven, eight, even nine courses uh, one one semester. So it, it is just a lot of workload. Um, but you're also at the same time kind of figuring out how the world works, um, which is not an easy concept to wrap your head around, right? You're, you're learning pretty much everything about how anything functions um so it's just a lot of information to take in yeah it can be it can take a while to get comfortable in those technical complex just situations and settings for sure mm -hmm.